A little over a month ago, I made a video about Hashirama Senju and why that man just does not make any sense. So naturally, I would have to make a video about Madara Uchiha at some point. So without further ado, let's get into it. I got a rant, y'all. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Guac, Papa Dustin, whatever the hell y'all want to call me. Back at you again with another video today. As always, feel free to follow me on all my other social media down below. My Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, gaming channel, all that good jazz. I know you guys are probably thinking, holy shit, your room is bright. Um, there's a reason for that. Because it is the butt crack of freaking dawn, okay? And I'm surrounded by windows, okay? So that's why. So, yeah. Anyways, let's, let's continue. So as I said, I made a video about Hashirama Senju, and I also talked about the power scaling in Naruto as a whole. And why the power scaling in and of itself is just fucking broken beyond belief. And of course, when talking about the god Hashirama and the power scaling in Naruto, you can't just not bring up Madara. Because Madara was the definition of OP. But not only was this man OP, but this man, arguably in my opinion, was the greatest villain in Naruto and probably one of the greatest anime villains of all time. And I'm going to kind of explain to you why I think that is. Well, not really why I think, more of just why he was in general. And I guess the biggest reason for that is because there was just so many levels to Madara's character um, that just made him great. I mean, at the beginning of Shippuden, okay, of course we were trying to pick up where we left off with the original series, okay? You know, the whole Sasuke retrieval thing, Naruto and Sakura trying to rescue him from, you know, Orochimaru. But even right off the bat, we had already heard Madara's name from Kurama himself. And the fact that he was mentioned, like, episode one to the very end of the series, and he was like the big, big bad, you already knew some shit was gonna go down. And man, did my boy Madara live up to the hype. I mean, this man, the minute he got revived with Edo Tensei, was basically just dog-walking the entire Shinobi Alliance. This man had them all shook before he even used the damn Mangekyo Sharingan. And not to mention, we're not even gonna talk about how he just bitched the shit out of the fucking five Kage. I mean, when you talk about a guy that had all the hype behind him and lived up to it, Madara surpassed it. We knew he was gonna be strong, but the, the work this man was doing to everybody, it just felt ridiculous. You know, when you watch Infinity War with, you know, Thanos fighting the Avengers, okay? You know, he's beating their asses, okay? But, you know, they're holding their own. Iron Man managed to draw a little bit of blood from him. Thor almost fucking killed him. I mean, yeah. But Madara, no one was even scarring this man. Every time they even tried to hit this guy, this guy would pull some more shit out. I mean, think about it. Madara was so OP, they didn't even give him a Mangekyo ability. I think I've said this before, but yeah. Pretty sure this man did not have a cannon, like... Mangekyo Sharingan ability. And yet, he was still fucking unstoppable. Sasuke and Itachi have Amaterasu, okay, Obito as Kamui, still ain't shit to Madara. And then not only that, bro has Rinnegan on top of that. I mean, when this man dropped a moon, had Anoki stop it, and then literally looked at him and said, what the hell are you gonna do about the second one? You knew he was on some shit. So, I mean, Madara was quite literally the reason why Hashirama was so godly, because you needed someone to rival his ass. This man put Kurama under a genjutsu, wrapped him in the perfect Susano, and, you know, this bro, this man was untouchable, bro. Madara was just that dude in terms of power. But it wasn't just his power that made him a good villain, okay? There was a lot more depth to his character than just him being OP. Madara was intelligent, he was cool and collected and arrogant. He had all the confidence of any, you know, good villain, okay? He was confident in his abilities, and he was confident in his plan. He never wavered, never let Takano Jutsu get to him like Nagato did. Madara was confident, he was arrogant, but he was cool, collected, and intelligent, and was strategic. I mean, we call Minato and Itachi and even fucking Neji himself, who I recently did a video on, we call them geniuses, but fucking Madara... Madara puts them to shame, in all honesty. And that was the thing I think that made him so dangerous. This man had so many OP abilities, okay? And on top of that, he was intelligent to kaboot and was, you know, completely confident in himself. I'd kill for Madara's confidence, bro. You know, he was strategic, he had a great and organized plan that he was letting come to fruition, even though he had setbacks here and there, he was still straight up going for it. I mean, Kishimoto himself literally admitted to writing himself in a corner when he made Madara. When the creator literally can't figure out how to beat you other than plot bullshit, you know you're that character. 
But probably the deepest part about Madara wasn't just his, you know, confidence and his, you know, his plan and his strategic mind and his power. Probably the most compelling thing about him was that he had all of this for a plan that most people would have probably preferred, honestly. I mean, his plan was essentially to put everyone in the infinite Tsukuyomi so that they can have the reality that they want. I guess the best way I can describe Madara, he was essentially taking on the role of a god just so he can give everyone heaven. To me, that was the greatest part about Madara is that, you know, Hashirama told Sasuke that Madara was deep down a kind person, especially when they were children, and if you watch the flashbacks and read it, he was. If you think about it, he never truly changed from those ideals. He just went about it in a much different way than guys like Hashirama and anyone else would have went for it. You know, he wasn't trying to go out here, you know, like Sasuke, and you know, of course he cared about his clan, but you know, he was thinking about the benefit of everyone, all shinobi. If you think about it, he never really strayed from the dream him and Hashirama had, you know, to bring peace and you know, that everyone could be saved. But where Hashirama put his faith in, you know, in the village and, you know, trying to protect it, Madara, you know, said, no, we need to do this a different way. Think about it. When Hashirama, you know, quote unquote, killed him, okay, Hash Madara literally says that Hashirama has his priorities backwards and that it would eventually lead the village to darkness. And let's be real here, bro was right. You have the Uchiha clan massacre, you know, have Itachi becoming a villain, okay, you have Danzo running shit from the shadows. Hiruzen being a terrible father slash leader, Orochimaru trying to destroy shit on a fucking whim, and you know, Sasuke's, you know, flippity floppity ass. And I mean, Obito's turn, which I know Madara manipulated, but if you think about it, it was kind of proving his point. I mean, Obito literally attacked the village with the Nine Tails simply because he kind of wanted revenge because he felt Konoha was the reason Rin, Rin died. Madara just went about everything in a different way, even though he really deep down wanted the same thing as Hashirama and everyone else. It's kind of like when Pain and Naruto fought, okay? Pain said he was looking for the same thing as Naruto, he just went about it in a different way, and really in a way you can see what he's talking about. I guess everything really just has perspective on it, if that makes any sense. Of course, Madara's methods were pretty cruel in some way, you know, just straight up killing people, but in the end, he still wanted what was best for everybody. And he was willing to do anything to accomplish that goal, and I think that's what makes him a really, really good villain. He was wise, noble, powerful, fucking strategic, but he also had that same level of cruelty that every villain needs. He wanted a goal that was noble and was willing to do anything, even if he had to kill and step on people to get to it and manipulate them. His goals are almost heroic, but he still has that level of villainy that is just so hard to reach. Far too often nowadays, I think we make the villains too relatable to the point where they almost seem like, you know, heroes. Whereas Madara, you know, he was relatable, you could understand his goals, but the way he was going about it was just cruel and just manipulative. To me, that's what makes him kill it as a villain, because he doesn't do anything that's just out of character randomly. He's not a random character, you know? He's very strategic, he's very, you know, manipulative, you know, he's very, you know, calculated and arrogant and confident in himself. All for a goal that's essentially, in a way, noble. And to me, that's what makes Madara up such a good villain. I could go on for hours and hours and hours about how great of a character Madara is, okay? But there's plenty of videos on YouTube that have already done that, okay? Maybe I will do another video like that. You guys let me know if you want to see a more in-depth analysis of Madara's character. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this. I just wanted to put a quick video out for you guys. Um, you know, just let me know down in the comments what you think, if there's anything I missed, of course. I want to thank you guys for clicking and liking this video, okay? Be sure to follow all my other social media down below. Go watch all my other old videos, okay? And I will uh, see you guys in the next one. Peace out.